Kyle here from allmediareviews.blogspot.com, August 29th, 2018, in the storage space, first video other than the, the record store day stuff in, I don't know how many, three or four weeks, anyway, and I might have to make this into two videos just because there's a lot of crap to show. So it's a bunch of CDs and vinyl to show. I'll do the CDs first, maybe the next video will be for vinyl. So uh, the two CDs I probably need to talk about first and foremost that I made a podcast, but I haven't actually shared it because there's some issues with it. Facts I get, got wrong about something. But <sighs> two, April. April's been kind of a, a, a least significant, name worthy month for releases. I don't know, five, six kind of high marked albums. But these were two of the biggest ones Family Crest is the War Act one, Kindo, not the Rainy Kindo anymore, Kindo, uh, Happy However Off After. I love both these records, and it's kind of spoiling, not really spoiling, because who people don't really care that much, really. <laughs> but for the mid-season list, I, I'm pr pretty sure that these two are going to be my top two records. This is really the top record. Oh, and I forgot about, I have the vinyl for that, too, and I'm not sure if I left it where I left it, because I have it around here. And I don't know. I'm gonna. S I, don't. <laughs> I do have it, and I'm not sure what I did with it. Unfortunately, I'll have to show it in another video, maybe in the vinyl video. So, but yeah, the War Act One Family Crest album, their third re record. It's really a polished album. I'll show you what the CD looks like, the booklet. Uh, it's really been a long time in making. It's a big concept. Of course, they released Prelude to War. Family uh, Prelude to War last year, 2017, an EP, but it's a part of a big concept. I'm not sure what exactly what the concept is about, but um, them against, you know, things in society they don't like, or the war against, the war against drug, the war against, you know, terrorism, you know, who knows, it's maybe more personal, but um, I'd say that I think this, I love Beneath the Brine for 2014, uh, and the EP they put out last year, their first album, The Village, I haven't listened to in quite a while, but uh, I think this is their best album for me, at least thus far. I mean, Beneath the Brine's great, but for some reason I think I've found that this album, and there's the track list, again, I have the vinyl I'll show maybe in the next video, um, but I think this is their best album in that I, I find the whole thing works from beginning to end, and as sort of a bigger concept, it flows almost thematically, um, I mean, there's a couple tracks here and there that are kind of, they're just ballads that I, I, I don't know if they, they don't blow me away or anything like that, but there's a few tracks that are kind of slower that really have parts that end up growing on me or just uh, one specific, the, the song Rest, um, it just goes, dun, it's got the xylophone part or something that goes, dun, 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 I, that part, I just, I have that rhythm in my head and it's just beautiful. Yeah, it's 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 mesmerizing. It's you know surreal. It's it's dreamy, but um, to love you, the opening like orchestral intro thing, and uh, ends up kind of being a great you know intro track. And it's it's not just a just a um, a vignette, uh, uh, not a vignette. Uh, it's not just a little ditty you know piece. It actually is a full song. Um, but it kind of starts off, kickstarts the album off really well. Keeps us dancing, it's catchy, very dynamic, of course. Take Tonight has a theme that I've heard before, I think similar, but it's got, it's very much of like a cinematic or da 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 you know. I've heard something like that before, but it's it's great, it's very, I totally get into it, the vibe is great. Never Gonna Stop is like sort of the token single, I guess. Although my wife is saying, she thinks Liam, the singer, is saying Never Gonna Stop. Like S-C-H or something. But um, I don't hear it. But I, it's it's catchy and it has sort of, it has some sax in it if you listen with headphones especially. Daggers, Waiting Still is good. I Was Born. Um, let's see here. The Mighty Echo. Waiting Still and the, the Mighty Echo are probably my two favorites on the second half. But then Mighty Echo segues into the last track, The Rocks, Resting on Your Back. Um, very orchestral, very kind of, the chamber stuff, of course, they're, you know, known for that. So I guess, suppose in terms of stylistically, it doesn't venture too far away from some of their other music, but I just think it's polished and sort of the record they've, they've perfected even stuff that maybe wasn't quite as good on even Beneath the Brine. Again, I love Beneath the Brine, but 
Um, we'll see what go what happens next. This is a part of a concept, like I said. Um, the actual CD, I think, you know, you, unlike vinyl, usually all CDs have of artwork. So it's one, so it's act one. There's going to be an act two. I know they have a podcast called, um, not the years, I forget the name of it now. But they have a, um, a Liam and, and Laura, the keyboard player and one of the other singers, um, are very involved. The whole band's involved in the podcast. It's like the family podcast or whatever. So, so a, a close second in getting almost as much airplay, airplay, uh, headphone time for me is the the new Kindle album. Which, of course, these songs I've heard for over a year, most of them, uh, more than that even. Um, but through the Patreon, since I'm a Patreon contributor, but uh, I think within the whole record, it's helped also hearing these songs. Here's the artwork. Um, and, uh, while this, I, I guess stylistically this doesn't also sound dramatically different, especially from their last record, Play With Fire from 2013, um, again, it's just polished. I mean, they use elements of all their albums. This is their fourth album, you know, if you're taking, obviously, the name being no really much different, being the Randy Kindo versus Kindo, but I think my favorites, like, the song, like, Smell of a Rose, I, I, after hearing it again now, should be on the radio. It's catchy as hell. It's almost as catchy as the Poor and Hunger Kings, the song that will probably be on the next album. It's, it's just really catchy. Um, City of Gods is the sort of prog, sort of mini epic, you could say. I think the prog folks should hear that song. Um, you know, Catch the Gleam, kind of glitchy, but it has a, a nice charm to it. One in a Million, Let Me Be, Return to Me, there's a, a single. And About Love is probably, if I had to go, my, my go-to favorite track on this album. Uh, very the vocal performance by Joey is is just awesome in that song, but I've known about that <laughs> for like I said through the Patreon, but to actually have the physical copy. I'm going to be getting a copy on vinyl of this sometime in May. So uh, colder than this, colder than December and obsolete are probably the two weakest tracks on this record, but they're still decent. Obsolete has, uses a lot of like samples and stuff like that, and talking about technology, um, I think there's one track on here that they also sample. Uh, one of the leaders, or maybe it, it is POTUS, but um, so it's very much of the time. But I really enjoy this record. It, it ends up number two or number one. Is it battling out with Family Crest? I don't know by the end of the year, but um, I'm certainly excited for the next record. Which, sh given the fact they've shared like six or seven songs on Patreon, probably will be in 2019. So, but yeah, these are the two biggest albums for me right now, and. Even though there's a lot of other albums that have come out since the beginning of November, uh, they're, you know, I'm, I'm not sure if anything's better. So, going along with the compact disc theme, first a very strong thank you to, I think his name is Janot, um, from um, uh, Romania. I believe he still lives there. I thought, he, he messaged me on Facebook a few different times. I thought at one point he said he may have been living in the U.S., but he's not. Anyway, I'm going to talk about this band Grimus, G-R-I-M-U-S, Grimus, 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 <laughs> it's not spelled like the McDonald's character, although when I first got into this band in 2014, I thought of, I couldn't help but for not think of Grimus from McDonald's, the big, you know, purple, you know, fun monster, or whatever you want to call him. So, first of all, I want to talk about their new album that just came out in February, I finally got to hear it, because he sent me a copy on it free of charge, I would have easily paid him, but I, you know, thank him. He's told me that I'm one of the only people he, he's found online that is really talking about them outside of Romania. They have a following Romania grimace, but, but anyway, this is their new album, it's called Unmanageable Species, and um, I'll get to the rest after that, hopefully if my battery doesn't wear out. I have my computer, I could do another video that way as well, but um, I guess, you know, grimace, to describe them, Here's the album artwork and everything. They're Romanian, but their vocals don't necessarily have like a, a Romanian English accent necessarily. Uh, they've been around for more than 10 years because their first album came out in 2008, which I'll show in a minute, Panicon. But um, their music, and I've talked about them, I talked about them on my 2014 video, I'm sure because the album that came out that year was on it, but Romanian band that sounds a fair amount like ours and like U2. Maybe a little bit like Clint 1918, um, some other bands in that kind of pop, kind of textured pop, influenced by some of the 80s, but also sounding modern enough. They have two lead singers though. The thing is, the the, the primary lead singer on most of them, on the 60% at least of the music they've released, 
does sound a lot like Jimmy Necco. And then the Bono channeling, because Jimmy, of course, resembles Bono as a big U2 fan, too. But I think on this album, though, on Manageable Species, that came out just February 18, there's more of a mixture. And there's some songs, they've done in the past, but there's some songs on this that has both, they have another singer. I could probably pull out his name here if I didn't show that. Um, and I hope I don't have to pause. Um, they have another singer that sounds, he's more of a, like a deeper, like a tenor or baritone. It's like a bar baritone. Yeah, I don't have their names, unfortunately. But, um, yeah, I mean, this one has more samples than piano, I guess, but the songs are still well written. Let's see here. Here it is. Bogdan Mazofi and Valentin Rauka. Those are the two singers. I think Valentin is the one that's the deeper one. Um... But um, Bogdan's the one that sounds a lot like Jimmy Necco. I mean, I'd like to hear him try singing some hours or some U2 sometime. Anyway, um, but yeah, this record is like, it's like nine songs. It's nine tracks. Kind of less is more. Uh, but I like the use of piano and synthesizers at point in on Unmanageable Species. Um, it like doesn't overstay its welcome, I guess you could say. Um, and they're melodic. I mean, you and I, heart, heart to break. Uh, Pablo Cotto, I think it is. Yeah, Piblo, Piblocto. Piblocto is like one of the first songs they put up on YouTube. Maybe is my favorite song. TV and Booze, Albatross. Every song you've listened to this album maybe four or five times in the car, primarily. And every song has something I enjoy. Uh, so yeah, I thought at one point that this might be <laughs> uh, as good if not better than some of these other... These, these, the, the two records I just, two albums I just showed, Family Crest, like, well, is this, I mean, I want to listen to this is just as much, but I've come to the, listen to all these albums enough, and I'm thinking, this is probably number three right now, but still, one I listened to in April of 20, 2018. So, just to kind of piggyback on that, talking about necessarily 2017, 2018 albums, but Janot, again, the, the, the gentleman from Romania who, rep, who helps uh, Rimis out, sent me their whole back catalog on CD. 2014's Emergence, 2011's Egretta, 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 I believe it is, and then their debut album from 2008, Panicon. Um, just to summarize these, and this one was the one I was introduced originally to them, uh, 16 songs, which, you know, makes it kind of long, admittedly, but there's a, just a handful of songs I just love on this album. Just a lot of the vocal performances largely, again, uh, Bogdan, I believe his name is, is the one who, uh, you know, he sounds like Jimmy, <laughs> and the Ars fan me loves his voice, but also loves just the songwriting in, in general. Um, they, uh, I don't know, over time they kind of were, went from sort of, you know, college rock to sort of a little proggy. I think this is their proggiest album. You know, they use some like harpsichord at points, I think, and vocal harmonies. I mean, my favorite tracks on this album, Emergence, would be the like the title track, like Weird Disco, The Hell I'm In, I love that song, that, is, that song should be on the radio. Um, what is it, Peregrine, Pale Hands, uh, Morning Stars, just some great falsetto vocal performances, the guitar textures they use. They also remind me of Vast, I was trying to, I forgot about that, when listening to the new album and some of these other albums recently in the last few weeks. Vast is the band that, you know, a lot of ours fans know Vast, John Crosby. Um, which, you know, the thing about John Crosby, he's known as kind of a studio honey. They do tour sometimes, but, but yeah, and this is long. I guess that's the only criticism is it literally is 16 songs long, as you can see. But, um, this is a concept, I think it's maybe more than one of their records, it's a big, like, maybe there's a story behind it. I haven't read through that whole thing, uh, which wouldn't take very long, but, um, but yeah, it's great to finally have a hard copy of one of my top, the top ten records I had from 2014, along with Family Crest's um, Beneath the Brine. Mergens from Grimace was in my top ten albums, and finally get a copy of that. Again, thank you to the band and to Janot. Um, and then the, the, the first two albums, you know, Agretta from 2011. I've been listening to this more over the last couple days. Interesting how they, one of these book deals, I have a Toy Matinee CD like this. Um, this is kind of a, a mixture of like the first album here, Panicon and Emergence. I mean, you can hear sort of their segue. I think you still had a, the primary vocals from uh, Bogdan here, but whereas this album I'll talk about in a minute is more raw, this is a kind of a mixture. They're using some piano, um, they're doing more kind of spacey, ethereal stuff at points, but it's still songs. Um, 
I just, you know, I think the second half of this album after listening to it is probably the one is what stands out the most. The title track, In Your Eyes, Space Girl, Fool. Um, the first track, Cave. So, and then just to, to, to complete this kind of discography coverage of the band Grimace, uh, Panic on their debut album, after revisiting, I, initially this was one of the first albums, I don't remember if I heard Emergence or this first, but um, this, uh, this is more raw. I think there's a punk edge to it. But or like a new wave edge to it almost the college rock punk edge, but you could still tell that they were being somewhat ambitious um, The guitar it's more guitar oriented. There isn't much piano or keyboards or synths on this But uh, the, you can tell that that Bogdan was a real, you know, excellent vocal talent just from the hearing a lot of the songs on here um, Let's see here. I would as highlights political animals is one of them. That's what I remember when I first got into them I, I enjoyed that one uh, different color shoes, mild disease, backseat driver. I mean, I probably the the first two albums I've listened to less than the other record, the other two records. But um, you know, as a whole, I'm really I'm really glad to finally have you know acquired copies of of all four Grimace albums on CD. I don't know how much it would have cost me. I know a lot of these, uh, some of these might be scarce if not out of print, especially the early ones. But but even getting the new CD was not easy. Um, but you know, I, again. I O I O I O N A U T. I need to post something in the blog about them. I probably will maybe include this video. If I if I don't, I'll embed it twice on the blog. So I'm gonna go on to vinyl in just a minute. But thank you for watching. Please comment if you feel any pins on Grimace or the Kindo album or or uh, Family Crest. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, I'd love you to subscribe because I got I'm trying to make as many videos as I can, especially you know once the, this whole storage space thing ends. And uh, we'll see you next time.